What's up guys, I'm LQ, this is the LQ Review. Thank you so much for joining me right here on my YouTube channel. This is where we talk about all the geeky, nerdy stuff that we love to talk about. Movies, video games, comic books, and TV shows. And right now, I'd like to give you guys my review of the third Conjuring movie, The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. Now, first of all, I'm a huge fan of The Conjuring universe. I love the first two Conjuring movies, The Conjuring and The Conjuring 2. I adore them. I think that they are just <clears throat> the top of the heap when it comes to like uh, paranormal type movies. Um, Annabelle 1, not that good, but Annabelle 2 and 3 were both really good. Um, the Nun was definitely on the uh, bottom tier of Conjuring movies, as was uh, The Curse of La Llorona. But overall, especially the main franchise Conjuring movies, they've been great. <clears throat> But we also know that um, James Wan, who directed the first two, he was not back to direct this one. This one was directed by Michael Chaves. And <clears throat> so I think that there was definitely some um, trepidation on whether or not the third one would be as good as the first two. Because Michael Chaves also directed The Curse of La Llorona, which, just like I said, it just was not on par with the other Conjuring movies. So... Did he rise to the occasion, or did he fall flat on his face? Well, I think the answer in this is a little bit of both. This is way better than The Curse of La Llorona. Way better. But it's also clearly the most inferior of the three main Conjuring movies. The first two are way better than this one. And then this is, like I said, way better than The Curse of La Llorona. This is also way better than The Nun. So... I can't say that he had a resounding success here because it is clearly not as good as The Conjuring 1 and 2. <clears throat> but it's definitely a step up. It's better than The Curse of La Llorona. So <clears throat> as has the other Conjuring movies, this details events in the life of Ed and Lorraine Warren. And obviously it's very Hollywood, um, sensationalized, you know, it's it's... The real Ed and Lorraine Warren were very controversial, and there was a lot of evidence that they were hoaxing. There was also some evidence that they weren't, but there was a lot of ev evidence that there, there was some hoaxing going on. And they kind of steer away from that in these movies. They talk about it a little bit, but really, they tend to steer away from the controversy that surrounded Ed, Ed and Lorraine Warren, and they play these movies a little straighter. Now, this one is based on the trial of, uh, what's his name, Arnie Johnson. And he was the famous case where he said, the devil made me do it, right? In, in court, he, he pleaded innocent on the, on the grounds of demonic possession. Which, funny enough, it worked, <laughs> right? Like, like it worked. He, he only ended up serving five years for manslaughter when he stabbed somebody several times. So, I, I don't know. I find that kind of odd. But, um... But what this movie did was it definitely expanded because they can't just have one case um, and then and then uh, focus on the court case because that's not the Conjuring movies. It's, they're not they're not legal dramas. They're not courtroom dramas. And honestly, I was afraid that that was the route they was going to take. And I was actually like a little concerned about that. But that's not the route that they took. They they took it in a completely different direction, where the courtroom drama, the the um, the case against this guy, that was all background stuff. What they were really focusing on was like this witch who, not witch, um, this Satanist who uh, created some sort of like witch's totem to curse several people. And once she was able to curse several people, then you would see. Um, her plans come to fruition, which I'm not sure if they were completely clear on what her plans were. If they were clear on it, then I miss that. But um, she had to curse, I think, three people with witches' totems in order to um, to uh, carry out her Satanist plan. Obviously, very Hollywoodized, very fictionalized, based on um, you know diverting from what actually happened here. So. Um, what was good about this movie, obviously, was Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga. They're just wonderful. Like they continue to play this, to play their roles of Ed and Lorraine Warren. They play them straight and they play them well, and you buy it. You buy what they're 
you buy their performances. And because of that, it lends a certain authenticity to these two controversial characters. And I think that, honestly, Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga's performances at Lorraine Warren has been so good that it has, it has lended authenticity to the real life characters of Ed Lorraine Warren, which is fascinating to me. But, um, you know, I've seen documentaries now about these. I've seen a lot of, of um, press that Ed Lorraine Warren, they're getting more press after their deaths than they did before their deaths. Um, so I think that's fascinating. Um, so, yeah, that, that's really the, the best part of this movie is that the, the performances continue to be top notch in the Conjuring universe continue to be. Um, not just uh, Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga, but the supporting cast also continue to do a great job of um, supporting these two actors. Uh, the tension was pretty good in this movie. This one was not as guilty as James Wan was in doing jump scares. Like, James Wan has perfected the jump scare and this movie's not as guilty of jump scares there's a couple of them but really the tension that we're getting in this is more based on a slow build and then a reveal you know james wan likes to do build slow build jump scare release tension real scare whereas this is more of a slow build scare <clears throat> and um and they're both perfectly legitimate ways of storytelling. And I, I'm not necessarily against Michael Chaves for deciding to to kind of hold off on the jump scares a little bit. But where this movie fails, where the other two Conjuring succeeds, is there's just some boring stuff in this movie. There's just some moments of boredness <laughs> like like where nothing's really happening a lot of exposition heavy moments a lot of dialogue heavy moments and and those exist in the other two conjuring movies also but in this it just it doesn't flow quite as good um in the other conjuring movies there's a great flow there's a great pace and in this one it just feels like there's times in this movie where the pace just co it just slows down to a crawl and that's the real weakness of this one, and that's what really sets the other two Conjuring movies apart from this one. It's really just pace. <coughs> it's really just pace and um, and storytelling. I don't think that this story is as compelling as the other two uh, Conjuring movie stories. But that could have been worked around had the movie had a decent pace and had. Um, had been able to avoid some moments where it just felt like it was a little too long. There were definitely some moments in this movie where I just felt like it was a little bit too long. So, so that's all. I love the idea that they continue to go through the life of Ed and Lorraine Warren, and, you know, I look for them to stick in the 80s for a while now. Um, <coughs> Ed and Lorraine Warren were very, uh, active in the 80s during the satanic panic and uh and i look for the next couple conjuring movies to really kind of find a foothold during this era because there was a whole lot of stuff going on at this time <clears throat> again a very controversial time what was legitimate what wasn't what we know is that there was a lot of satanists out there in the 80s and um or at least a lot of attention on satanists that had already existed before but either way um it was a uh, something that was at kind of at the forefront of our society thinking at the time and i think that I, for that reason i think that the conjuring 4 was going to kind of stay in this time period but overall the conjuring 3 was not bad it just wasn't great and because of that i got to give the conjuring 3 uh the devil made me do it i got to give it a b minus it just like i said it, it just wasn't on par with the other Conjuring movies, but it was better than some of the spinoffs. So that's how I feel about it. What are your thoughts on the Conjuring? The Devil Made Me Do It? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your take on it. While you're down there, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I put out a lot of content and I want to make sure that you're up to date with everything that I'm doing. And as always, thank you so much for joining me right here at the LQ Review, where we get to talk about all the geeky, nerdy stuff that we love to talk about. And until next time, we'll see you later.